presentation on my reflective journey. I'd like to start off by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land throughout Australia and pay my respects to elders past and present. Welcome. I'm Tegan, a Yorta Yorta woman who is completing a diploma in environmental science. My goal is to become a park ranger so I can help to protect our natural environment and pass on my knowledge to the public. The purpose of this presentation is to showcase my reflective journey and to present to you Indigenous and Indigenous perspectives in environmental studies. In assessment one, I stated that I have always seen my parents as all knowing. They taught me most of what I know about my Aboriginal heritage and that information coming from my parents was held as being true. I wasn't taught much about my people's history throughout school but being able to further my knowledge as an adult and my life experiences has led my positioning in the DMIS Bennett model as acceptance of cultural difference. I learnt a lot during this subject, but one thing that stood out to me was in topic three of this subject, telling stories of place, disclosures and narratives. It was said that throughout the world, so-called racial science supported the false belief that blood quantum could measure Aboriginality. In Australia, this kind of thinking is related to various policies, which controlled who people could marry and where they could travel. Reading this in a formal learning setting reinforced what I have known from my own life, as I never got to meet my paternal grandfather. My father's father was an Aboriginal man, and my father's mother was a white woman. And in 1945, this was seen as unacceptable. So my father's parents were forcibly separated and my dad never knew who his father was. In our required reading, I learnt that Australia has the world's oldest living culture and that it leads to many tourists wanting to make Australia a holiday destination. This was in Marcia Langton's book as she continued to mention about a cultural double blind in Australia and she said, that the double blind does not permit real Aboriginal people to manage national parks, but emphatically requires that Aboriginal culture serves as the advertising emblem to international tourists, marketing Australia as the wilderness experience in the last great frontier. Reading that was a key learning moment for me, as it made me reflect on the job position I want in the future, and made me think about the fact that my heritage is used to advertise these places, but my people are still not properly represented or able to manage their own land. Indigenous people have always had a connection to country, which includes not only the land they inhabit, but all living things as well. Their collective standpoint is to care for country so that it will care for them in return and they cared for this country for thousands of years without the need for all these new colonial laws that have been put in place today to protect the environment around us. As Watson states, in pre-colonial times, the natural world was undeveloped, but not because of an inability to transform the Roo, but because of a relationship of connectedness with all things in the natural world. We can also look at Crumpton's individual standpoint which also connects to an Indigenous standpoint as a culture, when she states that a reintroduction of traditional land management is essential if we want to address the ecological crisis we now face, which shows how important some people see the use of Indigenous perspectives in land management to be. Indigenous people's perspectives of land management has often been ignored. Pre-colonial times in Australia has been painted as an untouched wilderness which ignores the fact that Indigenous people had many land management strategies dating back thousands of years. An example of this is laid out by Gamage, stating that about 70% of Australia's plants need or tolerate fire, and knowing which plants welcome fire and when and how much was critical to managing land. Plants could be burnt and not burnt in patterns so that the post-fire regeneration could situate and more grazing animals could predictably be selectively locating the feed and the shelter they prefer. The Aboriginals of pre-colonial times used fire as an important land management tool 
And their knowledge with this and many more environmental issues is why it's important to incorporate Indigenous perspectives for a holistic understanding of our current environmental issues. My learning goal from task one was to gain a better understanding of the ways that Indigenous Australians cared for their land and their connections to it. As this would be knowledge that I would be able to carry with me into my future career as a park ranger. My learning goals grew and changed with each different topic that I started. And as my knowledge grew, so did my standpoint, which was challenged with different people's views and research. For example, learning about the misconceptions that are taught to us in early education was confronting. One of these misconceptions was that the country's traditional owners were primitive hunters and gatherers who wandered the land relying on chance for survival, which is how I saw pre-colonial Australia before I began this subject and gained a new perspective. This experience has shown me how people's perception of the world around them is shaped during their formative years and then modulated with new experiences and learning during adulthood. And how the influence of education, the media, society and life experience can affect a person's perspectives. To summarise, my standpoint has come from my parents and my life experiences. It has grown with further education from this subject. This subject has reinforced my knowledge of Indigenous histories and my own family's history and has also allowed my knowledge to grow. It has challenged what I have known about Indigenous land management and their connections to country by reading new information about these things from an Indigenous perspective. I was able to learn about the things I wanted to and reach my original learning goal, which in turn has also developed as I want to know more about Indigenous connections to their land and the history of my people. I have found this subject to be so insightful and I'm very eager for further discussions surrounding the topic materials. Thank you for your time today for listening to my presentation and I hope to hear from you all very soon. Thanks.